it, it seems to me that one of the big uh, areas of debate tonight will be on the future method by which European countries decide on a euro area budget. And I wondered whether you could explain to me, from your perspective, what's at stake with these kind of discussions? So the budgetary instrument, you mean? Yeah, BICC. Okay, so, yeah, so, um, I mean, let's be realistic. It's not uh, what uh, many had assumed at the beginning that this instrument would be. So it's not the massive macroeconomic stabilization tool. Uh, it's, a, it's something more specific, something smaller in size. Um, still, we are supportive, um, uh, and I, I believe we should, we should conclude this discussion. Uh, we should finalize uh, uh, our decisions regarding this, uh, this instrument so that we move on. As I said, it's not what it was supposed to be, but it's still useful, so let's get it done. Is it political reality that's narrowed the focus of this effort? Probably yes. I mean, we do uh, reach decisions by consensus, and the consensus opinion at this stage was that this should not be um, something, something bigger uh, that, that, than what it seems it will be. Let's talk about consensus in the context of trade. I don't imagine your economy, of all the European economies, is as exposed to the concept of US tariffs later this month as some of the others. But do you sense, based on the conversations you have with your counterparts, based on the conversations you have with your ministerial colleagues at home, that the idea of a US-EU trade conflict is as nerve-wracking as the trade dispute we've seen between the US and China? Uh, yes, I mean, um, the view from back home is that the service, the services sector uh, has been more resilient, uh, probably more immune to the, uh, to the rising trade tensions. Uh, and it's, so far, it's, it's the manufacturing sector which has taken the heat, and that's why we see Germany uh, in, in being in a slowdown. But, but, um, Obviously, there will be spillover effects, so it is, a, so it is definitely an issue. Um, in my view, it's probably the mo single most important issue, uh, uh, both as far as the European economy and, and the global economy. And it is a cause of concern because um, the very foundations of the um, global economic order, as we have known it, are being questioned. So it is an issue, and actually this is something which highlights the relevance of the EU, um, something which is not always clear, but um, I think it's very uh, easy for anyone to, to consider in how, um, uh, in, in how much uh, in, in how much more significant vulnerability we would be, position of vulnerability we would be if we did not have the EU as, uh, uh, as a common tra trading block. So you, you, you talk there about resilience. This is about cohesiveness, the fact that you guys can band together as 28 different countries, maybe 27 quite soon, and you have that extra firepower when it comes to negotiations. Well, definitely, and, um, uh, and trade uh, has been one of the um, successful uh, EU policies. And uh, that's why I say it highlights, it highlights the relevance of the EU during these times of, um, of global uncertainty and rising uh, trade tensions and um, protectionist tendencies. It highlights it. Do you think that rising trade tensions, rising uncertainty when you look at various economies could also be a wedge, could divide EU nations in some ways? Well, um, I hope not. Actually, I, I, I see these uh, challenges as, um, um, uh, as reasons for us to probably um, stick together and uh, make sure that the EU uh, remains uh, efficient, effective as a political and, uh, and economic union. Uh, so um, uh, I definitely... Um, do believe 
that we should um, uh, safeguard what we have um, won over the over the over the last few decades. Just one final question, then. You know, it's that time of year when you and your colleagues are all very focused on national budgets as part of the semester. And I wondered, when you're looking at your country's finances, what are the top three external factors that you think you have to consider? You mentioned there the possibility of spillover from manufacturing to services in an economy like yours. What are your things that keep you awake at night right now? Uh, externally, you mean? Yes, I mean, that's, that, that's one. O obviously, um, uh, uh, trade tensions um, uh, is an issue uh, and the no economy can feel uh, immune uh, to, to this uh, deteriorating economic environment. I mean, Brexit uh, is next uh, on, the, uh, on, on, the, on the list of uh, worrying developments, but, um, but let's face it, um, um, our government, uh, and I would say um, most governments, probably most companies, most corporates, by now are uh, as prepared as they could have been even for a no-deal Brexit. And uh, this very fact that um, um, it's, it's the baseline scenario now probably makes Brexit um, less, less of a risk than it was uh, a year or two. So if, if, if an event um, uh, does not have the sense of, uh, of, uh, of, of, of crisis or a sudden event, and it's something that we more or less see it coming and we are ready for it, prepared for it. Um, well, it doesn't mean that it's not a negative development, but not maybe uh, as bad as, as um, it could have been a year ago or two. Makes it sound like Brexit is now baked in as a risk. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.